Did you out here because of a plane or you just happened to be driving through? Actually, I was coming back doing a re-inspection to see if you was in compliance, and you know. Well, why don't we, why don't we just wait until we get after the court? Well, I'm coming through to make sure that the continued violations aren't being continued. But, but if I did continue for the court hearing, then what's the point of the court hearing? Well, actually, each day is a different violation. Hmm? Each day is a different violation. Each day? Yes. Okay. No. But um, uh, why do you wait so long? I've been doing this every day since then. Well, you know, you're not the only person I have to go and actually look at and property to inspect. Okay. Uh, let me ask you this question. Have you had any meeting with neighborhood people? Because somebody put a, uh, uh, put a flyer in my uh, mailbox that I found out was, um, uh, I had a feeling to put in there anonymous and they, they did come forward and confess to being the one. But the, well, Let's the, talk about your signs. So I want to talk about the neighborhood, about the court hearing. Let's talk about your signs. I want to talk about the court hearing. Right, they're they, 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 talking about meeting four, with them. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve signs. We're going to do one for each or we're going to do one for over 25? One for each? Okay, well. Let's do one for each. Okay, I'll talk to him. One, two, three, four. Why didn't we do that the first time? All right, so. so can you, uh, do we know what judge is going to be hearing me? I have no idea. Do we, what, what judge could be? I don't know what judge it could be. There is uh, the one that normally hears the case, normally. Okay, normally, there's one in the general drawer, yeah. No, I mean, you have several judges because they take time. But, but the one that normally hears co compliant is. What I've always seen is, is several judges that I know of. But the one I see the most is Mannheimer. Is who? Mannheimer. Manheimer. Yes. Manheimer. M A N H I M E R. Correct. Okay. What about Judge Winthrop? Is he one of the judges? Judge Winthrop. 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 Whatever. Um, he was back in the court of court. Back oh, in the court court. We're in magistrate court now. Okay. Another judge. Well, what another do you judge. do with those judges that were in court of court? I have court. no idea. I'm, we're talking about your sign. Okay. Let's, well, let's, I, let's, I am talking about the sign. Let's talk, let's uh, uh, how often do y'all have hearings over the sign uh, violation? Uh, how many times a, uh, a month there? I, I'm only writing here addressing your science today. Hmm? I'm only addressing your science today. Oh, I got questions about the court hearing, though. Well, let's let's talk about that in court. Oh, go ahead, right about it. I'll sign you. I'll sign everything. Okay. Go ahead, right, 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 right. I'll talk about everything. I'm not going to argue with you. It's Officer Armstrong. He's here to assist. Armstrong? Hey, how are you? I'm James Avery. Mr. Avery? Uh, James, uh, Dr. Avery, actually, but I'm not your veterinarian. Don't you call me Jim Ed. Okay. So, okay. Um, you know, we were trying to get to the bottom of it, and it seems like, you know, it's continued violations. Hmm? We were trying to get to the bottom of it last time to find out what's going on. Yeah. Like I said, last time I was here. Are you pretty sure I'm going to get be guilty the first time around? No, I said continued violations. Right? Well, I mean, yeah, but. Uh, but you said last time that you were over, you said it out of your own mouth. Oh, no? Out of your own mouth, you said that you were in violation last time. Oh, yeah, I know. I, I actually, I left the message on your machine wanting to have to make a date so we can get you out here and I have violation. Uh, for you ready, though I can be control of what I the violation, but you showed up unannounced, so that's not exactly what I call coming out here on my invite, and um, and um, so um, and um, you know I could have had a certain amount out here out here, for, but um, how many you have out here? You're not working. With, you, you said you, you, how many you said, have out here now. Okay, you said how, how could y'all work with me and resolve the problem? No, no, I said when I came out the last time, I was trying to get to the root cause. You talked about Emory, and we don't work for Emory. No, okay, but okay, you said how, you asked me how can DeKalb County help me. Well, you you know that better than me. How can DeKalb County help me work with the problem? I have no idea. I said we were trying to get to the root cause. That's root why cause. I asked you last time. Root cause is I have opinions I want to share with everybody that nobody wants to hear. And just because they don't want to hear it doesn't mean they don't need to hear it. Well. And I, what I find offensive is I can't come within 10 feet of this uh, sidewalk. People can walk to my yard with their opinion of me, and yet I can't come within 10 feet of them with my opinion. Okay. So I'm having a conversation. Like I said, I was having a conversation, and uh, they all and, and they have scenes together. So if you let me down to four. You're limited. Thirteen signs. You have thirteen yeah. signs. Yeah, but you're limiting my conversation. You're limiting ability. What I can say. You know, part that stuff at the back. I have to keep the right in bigger. So that's less I can say on a sign. And um, uh, no, no. Yeah, go ahead and write me up. I'll sign it. Uh, I'll sign it. I'm just kind of telling you what some of my points are. You understand where I'm, where I'm going with? Yeah. Uh, who do you, uh, let me ask you this question. This is uh, going to sound like a racial question, but. Yeah, actually, he's here to me and. Yeah, okay. Uh, both the people you write up, are they white or the black? Please, please, please. Please address all your questions to me. He's just here as mm -hmm. an observer. Well, most of okay. the people that you write, are they black or white? Because most of the people I stand in line Ms. with are going to. Miss A, Miss A. Hmm? We're here to address your sign. No, 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 no. Yeah, go ahead. Mason Middle Road. 10 4. 
You don't have you hear the right me um, What the most people are saying they were gonna be black. I know that ahead of time. I'm, I'm sorry, I hear not hear your question. I mean most people you write citations up for the are they white or black? Miss Miss A. I mean, Let's I'm focus this. on your signs. Okay? Well, this is politics. This okay, is, I, I'm, I'm being confrontational on purpose because I want to try to let the conversation. Well, you are being confrontational, and we're having a conversation. There's nothing wrong with being no, conversational. Confrontational don't mean conversation. You know, you know, the white people that used to live in that that, that they went to court against me last time. They were old white people. Uh, they were ministers with the Lem Memorial United Methodist Church. You're gonna sign them. We'll be right back. I'll be right. Yeah, and they had an 80 year old man working on on, on the house, on top of the house with a blower. An 80 year old black man. I think that would have been more, should have been more of a traffic hazard than my sign. So I'm, I'm just got some politics here. I mean, I want to have a conversation, and you're the only people that I'm ha able to have a conversation with. You're in my blood like holy wine. Taste so bitter yet so sweet. Oh, I could drink a case of you and still be standing on my feet. Hmm. The life not begin the day we all became witness to death, however briefly able or witness to life. I'm definitely a strong believer in the higher up we go, the more difficult death becomes. So uh, when I came across that um, picture of a bunch of old people and a pastor putting their hand anointing on the cross, um, to me that is um, the test is just beginning for them. The reality of the creation of our excesses. There were three of them. I can very easily see the, the guy hanging, each of the men hanging up on the cross to be someone's uh, son, someone's brother, someone's lover. And that's the couple all talking about that had the 80-year-old black man on top of their house that used to live in the house across the street. Their uh, son-in-law and daughter, who is Reverend Senior Pastor at um, St. Uh, Zion United Methodist Church. Um, they now, uh, they now own well, the name of the property, uh, the owner of the property. But um, um, they're the ones that, I, from the very first day that I moved to my house, long before I even met Bob and Janet Gary, I thought something was wrong about the two old men taking all day doing that front yard. And um, every day that bothered me, in the ideal world, I mean, they should have been retired. Just as much as those two should have been retired and had just a good health insurance and, and pension plan. Um, um, although I don't have a problem with them working, if they want to work or if they have to work, it's just didn't seem right because I know minorities uh, can have tend to be uh, uh, a greater percentage of our generation family. So, uh, so it was several years before I even met uh, anybody from that household. Uh, uh, I, I thought every two weeks I saw those two old men taking it all day. Well, um, finally one day an old woman come across, across it over to my side of the street and she introduces herself. My name's Janet, Bob. Uh, Bob was usual wasn't with her. He, he, as far as I know, he still works up down the street. Um, still works down the street at the Care and Council Center of Georgia, which is actually pastoral Care and Council Center of Georgia. Uh, everybody thinks he's retired, but uh, as far as I know, he, he still looks like one of their counselors. And um, um, but she went on to tell me how they were approached by property developers, offering them twice the value to sell the, their, their lot. Uh, but it was on the condition that it would be seven consecutive houses. Uh, there was going to be a number seven. And she went on to explain to me with a big smile on her face how 
Dr. Herman, who's no longer the him and his wife, or even older than they were, they're both dead now, had tick, you know, pointed out to the tick was out of the pole. And um, she had a big smile on her face, and I looked over and I go, no, I didn't know it, but you're right, they are beside the pole. And she explained to me how the telephone pole was the poverty line. And, um, and uh, Dr. Herman was the old man that had the, the habit of picking up, the, all of that used to be ivy. They just, the new owner cut, down the, cut, cut the ivy out. So had the, this old man in his 80s had, had a habit of picking up ticks every day, and he would stack them behind that telephone pole. While they had these uh, um, uh, black man in his 80s doing the yard work all day over here, just to do that front simple yard. But this time the ticket was out of the pole and she explained to me how they, uh, they were now on their property and he was mad at them because they didn't offer them the same um, deal. You know, they weren't interested in the lot, but it's the corner lot. We have deep, um, I, they, all seven houses across the street and my house, um, my, I think my house is like one or, only one or two or three on my property that has them uh, deep lots. So they were interested in seven and they were going to, you know, I, I, didn't, I wasn't happy hearing about this. And I knew immediately they were going to be tearing all this down, and um, I didn't want to hear that. And, and, and so she was pissing me off the same way she was pissing him off. She didn't realize that. But, um, but and I thought it strange that this household took this long to introduce itself to me, and it was telling me that they were going to move. Well, somebody held out, and they ended up not buying these seven lots. They did buy the lot behind it and did construction that now invade their property from the backside. I think that's probably the predominant reason they moved. Um, um, they were greedy. And um, now the, um, the, the invasion of privacy is invaded. Um, and um, so um, when she got down, I said, well, my name's James Avery. I'm a veterinarian that lives in this house. Not only I'm gay, I'm atheist as well. We're not that kind of Christian she said. Again, she blew Bob back into the house with her hand. And Bob wasn't even home. So, um, um, so I think people drive down. If they want to, uh, want to believe that anything is the traffic hazard for my, my household and that household, it should have been that 80-year-old man that I saw one day on top of the house with the blower. Um, he even asked me, you know, uh, showed interest in doing work, work for me. I no way I wouldn't let an 80-year-old man do work for me. That was uh, interesting. Um, but um, um, whether he wanted to work or had to work, you know, it doesn't matter. Um, the, the problem is. Ideally, he should have been retired on a pension plan, health plan, and let some younger person have this job and, and, and support his family. Uh, so, uh, where I came from, small town, you know, this is how us, us kids got, our, got ourselves started uh, making money, doing jobs for other people. That would have been an easy job for a kid. So, kids can't get a job um, to start it off with, and this old man working at 80, he's keeping somebody, a younger person from having. Um, 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 look at it. Well, that's Bob and Janet Gary. That's my mother. So, um, um, but that opened the gate. We, um, uh, Janet apparently I, I made an impression on her. That she had me, um, 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 um check them, the, um, get the mail, collect the mail for them on a couple of trips. One went to the Holy Land, one Christmas, and the other time went to New York. And I was more than happy to collect the mail and keep an eye on the house while she had. She gave me the phone number where they were going, uh, how I could reach them, when they'd be back, and and, um, and then one time I came home, there was a message on my machine uh, from Janet, concerned about a dog. But I got home so late that night, I didn't even call her. I figured it either uh, uh, nothing or they went on to the emergency. But the next time I spoke to her, I said, I'm sorry, I didn't return your call. And she said, oh, nothing, just ate a dead squirrel. It was, uh, the first time I even learned that they had a dog. It was one of their sons they just happened to be taken care of. And um, uh, so they took advantage of me as their neighbor, but they turned right around when I needed help. Uh, they. They, they they pulled every pernicious prevaricating cut trick in the book, congeniality buyer, and this is how I compare them. I have that once I don't have it out today, but it says Rosewood Massacre. I had just as much right being over there in that house asking for help um, as she had taken advantage of their next door neighbor, and uh, instead it ended up I had every right being outside of my comfort zone, the same as that black man that was accused of rape by a white woman uh, wrote uh, nearby nearby Sumner. Um, so that's how I, that one sign, um, Rosewood Massacre, Pernicious Prevaricate, he was so big, he was so black. That is just my way of calling the wife of a naturally known pastor, George Robert Gary, just another Pernicious Prevaricate account. So that's my mother. My father's dead. Uh, this is my version of King Solomon recontextualized. 
Um, toward the end of, um, you know, the, the story about King Solomon's judgment about putting the baby between two women. Um, I, uh, Janet, was the one that introduced her after me, so um, I feel like between my mother, who would rather give a grown man up for adoption than accept to raise a gay son, uh, between me and Janet, uh, I'm being torn in half, and um, she's letting Bob do it. She's letting Bob do this. And, um, and of course, her, her son, her firstborn son is a pastor at uh, Al Rock, and uh, they have a, a daughter, Susan, who's senior pastor at Mount Zion. This is all about her letting him hide, letting her husband, that finally uh, worthless jellyfish, hide himself and the rest of the family behind her. So I don't know whether she, this is her, what the, she is wanting them to do, or this is what they are wanting her to do. Um, um, I can tell you, like my family in Arkansas, there's a reason why I keep distance between me and them. Uh, they don't care how educated a black man is, he's still a nigger. By extension, they don't care how educated a gay man is either, he's still a faggot. So that's why I have a laugh can be a very powerful thing. Why sometimes in life is the only weapon we have. You have Reverend Felt, children, God hate America, God hate fag, you know, God, you know. So um, uh, the church, you know, the Methodist church, still not allowing. Uh, self avowed practicing homosexuals as ordained ministers, they, I consider the Methodist Church to be just as guilty of every fag bashing that takes place in America. And, uh, you know, when they remain silent, you know, this allows people like Reverend Phelps to. Uh, um, yeah. You have your driver's license? No. You go get them, please? Hmm? You go get those, please? And if you answer the question. Hmm? If you answer the question. I'll finish with some questions I have about the court no, here. Sir. No, sir. No, I'll okay. go get it for you. Okay, please. You mm -hmm. won't make this official, correct? Right? Okay. Um, well, well, when was that court hearing for any citation period? Uh, the 12th of July. That's 12th of right July. Mine's right mine mine so not until after my court hearing. Why can't it all be the same date? June it will be the same day. You said 12th of July? Yes. But all of these will be the same date as June 28th? Yes. Well, what, did you, what did you think about uh, July 12th? My understanding the court date was June 28th. The initial one, but it, it had changed and somehow. My understanding. Nobody has sent me a notice of this. Nobody sent you a notice? Uh, as far as I know, it's till June 28th. Well, I'm just scheduling these for the 12th of July. Huh? I'm scheduling these for the 12th of July. You're taking the lead? Huh? You're taking the lead. Well, take again. I'm scheduling these or the other one. for the 12th of July. What about the other one? The other one will be handled when the other ones come up. If it's 12th of July or the 28th. Okay. I'll be in court either day. So why can't they all be 28th? Well, we have to give a time frame for it to get into the system, okay? We have to put it into the system. Okay. Have you been talking with my neighbors about all time? Have y'all been yeah, working together? Can I'll I have go, yeah, I'll go, yeah. Will you answer talking. my question after I get the driver's license? Yeah. Will you stay here until I have my question? I'm answer? asking your question. The best time to answer your question will be in court. You get the opportunity to have yourself. You said how the cap category work would be. All I need to know is have you been working with them behind my back? I asked them to include me. I sent the Amazing Real Civic Association an email saying that I wanted to be included in on these. Uh, why are you recording that? Aren't you recording? Hmm? Aren't you recording? Yeah, but I just want to know why he's recording it. He, well, if you're recording, why, why can't he record it? Oh, I'm just curious. I'm just curious. Is this for work or for, for personal? Is yours for personal? This is for, this is, uh, for, for all of us. At my name, at the neighborhood, so, I want to, at the neighborhood I want to believe I live in it since halfway around the world in all four directions, the same point in the Indian Ocean. Uh, then the, you can't get any bigger than neighborhood than that. Can we so get, what, your, what can they we get your driver license? Okay, I'll go get it. Mm. Thank you, sir. Mm. I'm trying to work for you guys, but all you're doing is just letting them get away with it. You're letting them get away with Marlwood Magic all over again.
I got dog tags on. Say that again? Yeah, this is a dog. Face upside down, mouth is on top. Hmm? Okay, well, let's, let's see your citation. Alright, let's see your brother. Okay, thank you, sir. But while you're doing this, I want y'all to hear this story. Okay. Um, this is my this thumbs up my family in Arkansas. My sister, seven years older than me when they come visit me here. Okay. Yeah. Donna, are you not aware just how much more our deceased, frugal Republican father? Um, are you not aware that our deceased, frugal Republican father charged just as much delivering black babies as he did a white baby? He had a zip party politics that's holding them back from their first share that a slice of the American pie. Yes, you mad, I'm already aware of this, but he sent them one final bill and they still didn't finish paying him back. Donna, you really do need to stop cheering for the Confederate Army every time you watch a Civil War era movie. Especially considering all you do is play tennis with your rich lady Republican friend, but that's just the way it was back then. Yes, 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 Donna, you are so right about this. It is a very good thing there have been some improvement since, but it was our family haven't had nothing to do with any of the improvement. Your family still having nothing to do with any of the improvement. Mm -hmm. You get you know, upset, you know? And here's the funny thing is, uh, I can't help but find it interesting how blacks tend to uh, uh, um, glorify um, Lincoln, and um, and um, he was actually, uh, the only reason he, you know, Gave the, the Emancipation Proclamation address. It's because they almost lost the battle on northern soil. Now, the, uh, the home court always had the advantage, and, and that was a lot of lives lost. It was two more years before that even took effect. The only reason he probably did that was because once word of mouth got around to the southern slave that uh, they could probably behind the scenes, they would, you know, once they knew they would be free from the war, uh, the North won the war. Didn't mean they had to draw more people back from the front line, back to the plantations to keep the keep the uh, people keep them under control. Plus, they, could, you know, they were made to work in the um, uh, ammunition. Uh, they could sabotage here and there where they can. We don't know how much how much effect is that. And I, if I could have my way, I would have a uh, Harriet, um, what's the, the um, Moses? Harriet, um, what's the black um, woman, the, 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 the train, the, the, the underground railway? Just finish the story. No, what, what, what's her name? Harriet. Um, we listening. Oh, well, I, I would think she would, ought to be given a posthumously like Jesus was given the Messiah, like a five-star general. If you think about it, she was friend, uh, once she was free, she helped, you know, she enlisted with the Northern Army, where she was kind of like a spy and all that. And uh, she said to a, a, a general friend of hers, uh, she was mad because um, Lincoln was not considering freeing the slave. And uh, what, he, what she said to him was, um, my, uh, my, uh, no, God ain't going to help the, uh, Master Lincoln win the war until he done the right thing. And then she went on to plan down. Think of that as the big snake down there. And that snake bites you. And then the doctor, they call the doctor and the doctor comes and cuts it out. And, um, and then that snake bites him again. And the doctor comes out and cuts it out. And the snake bites him again and you keep doing it over and over and over again until you kill him. What she's saying is free the slave. And that way, you know, uh, that way you know, it'll be like that snake. So I think she should have been um, given the um, uh, credit for having won the Civil War. So my, uh, <laughs> Clinton, um, Abraham Lincoln only did it because he needed to win the war. And that's what he thought it was going to take, take make it necessary. Where I came from, we had a city pool, a small town pool, 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 um, per capita population of 4,000. We had a city pool and a country club. My father was a doctor, a country club, and um, mostly lawyer, mostly Methodist that were members of the country club. Uh, but the city was told they had to integrate the city pool. Well, instead of integrating the city pool, uh, the city chose to close it down. And, um, and, and then they sold it later to, to somebody that made a private club. So we had two private swimming pools, no problem. And I remember sitting in that country club pool with, uh, and I remember the NASA boys saying, uh, they were given the choice of a swimming pool or a basketball court, and they chose the basketball court. And I said, bullshit. I remember, I, I've seen the court. We used to go pick up our maid, LB. And, um, and uh, there's no way they would have chosen that over a tennis court. So, uh, and then recently I read about uh, six adolescent black uh, kids drowning at a River State Park where they were, a group of families were having a picnic. All because they couldn't swim the distance of one feet getting from where they stepped off the ledge back onto where they could step on it. Six kids drowned, and all the adults could do was stand and watch it. So, um, to, uh, to me, these are, these are the things I remember. And I'm fighting for you guys, you know. Uh, I'm taking my story and trying to help all of it. 
But you know, the problem is, when you try to help all of us, nobody sides with you because you know everybody's going to have to give something up. And uh, and I, if I'm right, you know, I run out of money trying to do all this. And you know, when I get run out of right now, I'm at sixty-four thousand. If I get down to, uh, to zero, I will have a short to either sell my home or um, expiate it for all our sins. How and uh, how I'm going to do that, I don't know yet. But uh, don't be surprised if same as Jesus and I, if I am raised above the earth, will have drawn all people to myself. So at the end of 64,000, there's absolutely nothing giving me hope that there's going to be any improvement in any of this. So don't be surprised that I, too, have, been, have drawn all people to myself. You may find me hanging off one of these crosses. You could. I'm not saying I will. I'm just saying that I will have lost all hope. Good enough reason to have lost all hope. So, okay. um, Mr. Avery. Yeah. Get your driver's license back. Okay. Thank you, sir. All right. Put some of this number. 0266. Nine five. Mm -hmm. Written for signs exceeding the accumulated signage exceeding 24 square feet. I counted 13 signs. Okay. Right. Um, 48 square feet plus 12 square feet equals 60 square feet. So I could do one large one to still be just one one violation. No. Hmm? Yeah. No. You know I could do like a the next time around I could do a big one. Well, how, what would that violation mean? Not good. Would it be greater than six square feet, or would it be divided by twenty-four? It's gonna be hmm? divided twelve. Well, I mean, you may come back before then. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm I might. I might. You might. I so, might. With, with a large sign, one big large sign that says, uh, no. uh, "Would that be well, one violation greater than twenty-four? What would it be?" You ought to know. You'd tell be, me right now. Hmm? You'd be in violation. Hmm? You'd be in violation. I will be. Yeah, I'm, I know it would be. Right. Would it be? Would it be the, uh, twenty-four? I mean, that square feet divided by twenty-four, or would it be one violation? No. Hmm? The court. I wonder if I want to. I want to try to keep my. I want to keep. I want to. We'll discuss it. Work with me. Work with me. Work with me. One large sign between two tall trees.